due to time needed to finish the pelican we're going to be doing in class Friday, we're going to be doing something different with the feathers than what you see in the painting that I've done here. And I would have re-recorded the project six days ago, but I got sick. I'm still sick. And I will do my best to explain what we're doing when we get to the feathers um, when we get there. But uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. I asked you guys what you wanted your last watercolor painting to do, and two people requested a pelican. So being one of my absolute favorite birds, <laughs> um, I took on the challenge. I've never painted a pelican before. So I will tell you that it's really fun. There are hundreds of different looking pelicans. I'll bring some samples to class Friday. Um, and I actually pieced together one that's poster size. It's probably bigger than life size. So you guys can see the details. So what I got caught up in, in painting this guy, is the details. So, um, if you pay less attention to the details um, and just really kind of do enough to tell the eye what's going on, you'll have plenty of time to um, paint your guy. Um, what I'm doing here is pretty soon I'm going to show you not only the drawing, the, the drawing that I'm sending you. I'm going to show you the pelican that I drew from, but also the pelican whose colors I like more. Um, you get to choose whatever colors you like. This guy is that I'm painting is a brown pelican, so um, and the light, the sun is coming from his back, the back of his head. So when the when you see the painting, yeah, I keep spinning it. When you see the painting. Um, in the direction it's supposed to be. The light is coming from the right. So um, right now I'm painting the highlights um, of the back of his head. And this part of the pelican is a really cool furry, kind of a furry feather, teeny, teeny, tiny feathers. Um, so I attempted the highlights of the feathers. I'm going ahead and putting those in first. And then brown is going to go in this section. Now, what I was not able to accomplish was a dark enough brown and to be honest I'm not sure why um, I you will see that I keep adding layers to the brown I just can't get that line right there it needs to be really dark and crisp to give it the contrast that it needs so um, I started too light. You can see how light this color is, and by now you probably know that watercolors dry a whole lot lighter than, than what you see. Not all of them, um, but this brown sure did. So um, I will continue to darken up <laughs> the guy's neck um, to bring in some contrast. So um, hopefully I won't talk too much, but I will just explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, but you guys can pick whatever colors you want. If you want to make a green, blue, and orange pelican, go for it. Just, um, you know, we'll be using the same drawing. Um, if you have another drawing of a pelican you want to do, by all means, you can do that too. Very last minute though, to <laughs> try and come up with a sketch. Here's the drawing of the guy I got my drawing from. But I've altered him a little bit. So I'm actually following the feathers of this guy. But what happens is later on, I confuse the two and I start drawing the feathers of the brown pelican with this gray white pelican. And um, oh, you'll see. So, what we're going to do when we get to the feathers on the body is not so much detail as what you'll see me do. Um, you could just fill it in and then add some some smaller feathers, uh, feather strokes, just to show the directions of their feathers because usually their feathers are laying down nice and neat. Um, and I managed to make his wing very complicated and tangled looking, <laughs> but um, I still like him. So right now I'm just trying to communicate that the neck feathers are more fuzzy and soft than the head feathers. I just think it's so funny how their hair sticks up. Um, and now I'm adding a warm brown for the side that the sun is on, keeping this, the side that's to his beak 
and that bag under his beak. Um, trying to keep that a cool color because it's in the shadow. And you can see already that the neck has faded out. It's just a funky color, so we won't be using that color. Actually, I'm going to have all the colors available um, tomorrow. So remember how I said, if you want to take some of the colors home, bring your own um, palette. Um, unless we can, maybe we can on the, you know what, you could, if you'd like to commit to bringing it back, you could sign out. Um, I, I noticed that there isn't going to be a painting class next semester, so you could sign out a palette and bring it back. Um, if you don't bring it back, the school will most likely bill you for it. <laughs> um, but I could put paint in each of the little compartments and you could paint at home because you, your money, well, the school's money, your money paid for the supplies. Um, I need you to bring back the orange, little tiny orange brush. Just go ahead and bring it back, leave it with me. That one's my brush, the one I'm using right now. Um, but the four brushes in the set, those are yours. Um, what, what else do I, the pencils and erasers are mine. Is that right? I'll look that up. I still have a headache, so I'm not going to commit to anything I'm saying right now. I added too much paint so I'm pulling it off again because you want the center where it's lighter to um, it's the highlight area so you want to create a roundedness or any kind of dimension you want to have it darker on the edges and lighter on the part that you want highlighted like his head his head's turning out pretty nice because that's the highlighted part um, from where the sun is Pelican's beaks are very interesting. Uh, if you don't want to do that bag part, I'm sure I have a picture where um, that neck isn't showing so much because this part where the yellow is and where I'm about to add some hot pink um, is super whiny. The, the detail on this is amazing. I mean, these guys, they make their mouths open huge and they can pull in and hold like huge fish in there. So all these little lines just represent the kind of accordionness of, um, I wish I knew the name of the, the bag. Uh, that's what that's representing. So I got a little taken into the detail of that um, in making all these lines, but I wanted to communicate that that's, that's what was going on there. time I followed a pelican and recorded him and then I have a picture of him staring at me and it's really cute because they're staring at you and their little eyes even though they're on the side of their head they're looking straight at you and you just know don't mess with me because um their little hooky beaks yeah not the softest thing you want to encounter say I'm 
happy with how everything in this section turned out, what you see here. It's his body with the feathers. I've never painted a bird before. So um, I am not, I will admit, I am not knowledgeable on how to paint feathers and I would have repainted. <coughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me. <coughs> I can't even re-record that. Sorry, you guys. I just don't have the energy, but um, really, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, I would have repainted this, but I didn't have the time for one thing and then I got sick. So um, I'm just adding a brighter yellow here just to pump that color up a little bit. And also because I love the effect that putting um, color on a wash, I love that speckly kind of look. Um, I realized it was too dark and so I'm removing some of it right now. <laughs> but I still have the brighter lemon color on there that I really am happy with that. And if you can see the brown of the neck, it's faded right out again. And I just don't know why. I don't know what it is about the color choices I used that look so great, um, just didn't turn out. So there's something funky about that color. It's actually a brown that I have of my own. So you won't need to worry about that. You can also mix. You guys remember how to mix um, a neutral, right? So basically you can paint this bird with the primary colors, blue, yellow, red. You can get any color. Um, and so what you do is when you get your secondary colors, the orange, green, and purple, you look at the blue and what color is across from blue? It's orange. So, blue and orange, red and green, um, purple and yellow, those colors together will make a nice neutral color. So you don't need the color brown. You don't need any other color. You can get every color you need by getting a, a true red, a true blue, a true yellow. Um, and then you can tone up, tone down, and um, darken from there. Um, so, uh, what am I doing here? Oh, that's right. So I'm just splotching in some color to add to the same style as I've done on the head. Um, anyway, so you can use those three colors. So we will, I am bringing a brown that comes in the set that we, the color set that we um, purchased for the class. Uh, I think it could be I added too much water. Um, so I'll make sure that we don't let that happen this time. Um, I was just wanting not to make it too dark and I think I just added too much water. It's it's odd because I didn't realize it till after I was done. And then I add a little black to the brown. Um, it helped a little, but sometimes anytime you add black, it, it can also dull your painting. There's something about it that just goes Bleh. So I I recommend not adding black and I recommend just adding the opposite color on the color. I also realized later that I forgot to finish the tip of his beak. Oh no! <laughs> oh, their eyes. I love their eyes. Some of them are yellow, some of them are bright turquoise, some of them are so clear and transparent they're eerie. And cool at the same time. Getting the pupil a perfect circle is a little tricky so take your time just use the very tip of the brush don't press so much just kind of move that paint around to get that perfect little circle little pupil and um, you'll be fine so here i'm attempting to do some feathers i will admit my weaknesses um, and i apologize for not trying to learn how to do that beforehand but i was so excited to do a pelican i'm like i can do that yeah I can do that. Yeah. I'm not unhappy with it. I just, um, I would have done something differently. Anyway, so you can put this wash on there. You can just wash in the direction that the feathers go. You can put a wash in there. 
and not be so persnickety about the feathers. I, I am happy with how I blended in with the little brush right here. I do like how I blended um, the body into the head, the neck, um, just to kind of mesh those two together. Uh, I wanted to show the differentiation of the color sections. Um, Anyway, I mean, you can just do this. Like, the feathers like that, that's fine. A little, a little bright on the purple side, but it still isn't within the same tones and hues. I, I like it a lot. I have a little bit of red or pink, especially on the top, because the sun is shining there. Um, and, I'm, and at this point, I'm just adding to show the direction of the feathers, not so much the feathers themselves. And if we had time, one of the other things is if we had time, you can let let the painting dry and then add another layer of feathers. Let the painting dry, add another layer of feathers. And you'd have a better result than trying to paint the layers like I was and um, different colors all at once. But it kind of takes on a nice tone because I think it would be too a much higher contrast than the rest of his neck and head. And I think it would pop too much at this point. His eye still is the focus, um, not something else, which is what I wanted. Here again, I'm doing the wash, not on the edge, and then I add the paint to the edge so you can get that definition of a clean line, subtle but clean line, um, to differentiate. There is a wing there. You guys ever watched a pelican walk? You know their wingspan's so huge and they're a heavy bird and they walk and they waddle like a duck because I think it's because their wings are so heavy. I don't know, but that's what I was thinking. So if my wing wasn't so wet and I just did those little feathery shapes, I could have stopped there. But oh no, I gotta work it harder. So now I'm doing the wing of the brown pelican, not the drawing I've sent you. Um, I'll have that with me, so I will show you the direction, um, providing I don't get a fever. I'm hoping to not get a fever. Um, so this is the shape of the other photo. Uh, the photo we're working from does not have these kinds of feathers. So now look at me, I'm all like complicating the feathers. Like, oh, see, there's what we're supposed to be doing. And that's when I realized, oops, I can't go back now. So, I just gave him some goofy feathers. Kind of more like these, but yeah, you get the idea. I think the biggest challenge of a feather I've ever done is painting a peacock. Is something it's tough to do without fine detail because they're so spectacular. And now I'm just adding more contrast um, to give it more dimension, to give it more interest, to, to pop, you know, bring out, bring set back. I'm choosing all the wrong words. painted the pink around his eye. I was like, really? Red eyes? I didn't want him to look angry or mean. You're such a cool bird. At the end of the video, I add a background. You do not need to do that. Um, I ended up adding a background. The paint was the color I wanted. And it faded so far out, you'll see what it looked like when it was wet and when it was dry. You can barely tell there's even any paint there. So I would have added more, but this painting took longer. What I was able to do here took longer than the class time we have. So I had to stop. I had a little alarm that was set and I was doing the feathers 
when I was when I got to the wing, right before the wing, my alarm went off, and I'm like, I don't have time to fuss with these feathers. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, unless you you can paint uh, paint all the basic shapes and areas first, then go back and do the fine detail, and all those areas will be dry enough, and you can decide what you want to bring attention to. Um, and what you're fine with just keeping kind of subtle um, because I think this is the most time consuming one we've done and I think that um, it'd be really good to finish during class. <laughs> what I can do for you guys, I'll bring them home, I'll flatten them. I flatten everyone's paintings in between the two classes, I mean in between the two weeks. Um, I can bring them home and flatten them and then keep them in my yearbook drawer and you guys can pick up your paintings in my yearbook drawer. I don't want to put them in your file folder. I feel like they're going to get wrinkled up again. So um, if you don't, uh, you know, I really don't want you to take them home because I love being able to scan them and share everyone's paintings with everyone. So. Um, and remember, one good reason to take some paints home is if you wanted to um, paint again something you did that you wanted to try a different way or um, try it again, by all means, you can. These videos are going to be up on YouTube for a while. One of the advantages of our paints are they are light fast. One of the disadvantages are they're more per they are permanent. So they're not um, what you lay down is kind of what you'll see if you're not careful. If you don't have a lot of water uh, laid down first. Am I making sense? I'm not sure. I think I lost my train of thought. I'm pushing through this, you guys. And then if you just add more water, when you want the color away from the object, add more water. And right now I'm just cleaning up the extra paint. You just add more water and it'll push the paint away. And then I'm just gonna sop up some of it and soften it up a little bit. And as much paint as was on there is what I wanted. And then, boop, see, it's all faded. So anyway, enjoy. I hope you have fun and I can't wait to see what you guys do. Thanks for this semester, it's been fun.